guys! Today I want to talk about this new idea in the food industry called cultivated meat. And this is the thought that is there any way for us to have a meat supply without having to raise so many animals or rely on animals? Now I know this one sounds crazy and also really complicated, but I think it will only take me a couple of minutes to explain to you how this might be possible. Now, before we jump into what cultivated meat is and how it could be made, I just want to point out there are a ton of names for cultivated meat. So this is maybe confusing because they all mean the same thing, but I've seen it be called cultured meat, clean meat, cell-based meat, animal-free meat, lab-grown meat. So these are all terms for the same thing. I ended up going with cultivated meat because there was just a survey done by the Good Food Institute to see what name of this, you know, new meat, what name do consumers most like? And they found that cultivated meat was the most accepted term. Now the main difference between conventional meat or the meat most of us probably eat right now versus cultivated meat is that for cultivated meat, you wouldn't actually need to slaughter any animals. And that's sort of the whole driving idea or the motivation behind cultivated meat. Okay, so how the heck are we going to make this cultivated meat? The funny thing is these aren't new scientific, scientific concepts or anything. They just have usually been used in the medical field for tissue engineering and not applied to our food system. To start the process, you still need one animal at least, and this is called the donor animal because we don't need to kill the animal, which is the good news. We don't need to kill it to harvest the meat but we do need an animal to harvest cells from. So this would be similar if you've ever gotten, you know, like a mole or a skin growth removed, they are removing some of your cells. So we need to do the same thing with say a cow or a pig. We need to take a sample of their muscle cells because within the muscle, we can actually then get stem cells. All right, let's say you have yourself some animal cells. Now you need to put them in a bioreactor or a cultivator. And these are just fancy words for saying you probably put your cells you harvested from an animal into some big stainless steel, steel tank that is at an optimized temperature for the cells to grow. Maybe it can mix and aerate the cells if they need oxygen or to be turned over. So really, if you ever hear bioreactor, it just means you're putting these cells into some ideal conditions for them to grow and multiply. Now, your cells are not going to grow and replicate if they don't have some type of food. And typically their food or fuel, this is provided as some type of liquid medium you can give the cells. And this is a special recipe. It probably includes certain sugars, proteins, vitamins, minerals, uh, hormones. You, you have to think, how can I provide food for the cells so that they will grow and replicate to build this piece of meat outside of an animal? Once you have enough cells, and I'm talking, you know, like thousands and thousands, like you need a lot of cells, but once you have enough, you can start shaping them into a specific structure or a sort of piece of muscle. Because these cells on their own, they're not going to just magically form muscles like you would see on an animal. You really need to add something that guides them into a specific pattern that mimics what muscles would be like. And so here we add something called a scaffold. And the scaffold, again, is just basically a stencil or a guide of how the cells should grow, what shape and structure should they take. take. Some of these scaffolds are edible, meaning they'll just stay in the product. But other times the scaffolds are removed later on in the process once they've done their job. And it's the scaffold that guides the cells into aligning into certain structures 
that resemble muscle fibers and then muscle tissues. So this is what allows cultivated meat to resemble, have a similar texture and a similar look to traditional meat. From what I've read, this whole process is going to take anywhere from two to eight weeks until you have enough cells that they could, you know, be assembled into like a small piece of meat, a small piece of muscle. Now, once you have enough cells, you might remove the scaffold if it's not edible. But like I said, a lot of these new scaffolds, they're produced from uh, starch often or alginate. So they're produced from edible ingredients and then they just stay in the product. Now, the type of products that are going to be the easiest to make this way and that we are seeing first is something like ground beef or a chicken nugget. And that's because these are not complex, right? It's a homogenous, you know, group of cells. We could easily make this. What's going to be more difficult and we are not going to see for a while is something that's structurally complex, something like a steak because this is a really specific organization of not just muscle cells but fat cells, connective tissues, we need blood vessels, we need filaments, and we need them in a very specific structure to mimic a steak. So this I think is going to be years away. And for an industry that doesn't have any commercial products as far as I know available for you know us to purchase, this has become a super crowded sector of the food industry. There are a ton of startups and small companies working to come up with the you know, first available, widely available cultivated meat. Some of these companies, they focus on one species. Maybe they're trying to cultivate beef or chicken. All right, I hope you see the theory of making cultivated meat isn't that complex, but it is going to take a while for researchers to figure out the nitty gritty details of each step of this process. And especially if they want to make this cultivated meat and a massive industrial scale to feed billions of people in this world. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and I will talk to you next time.